Happy New Year. I'll say it one more Sunday. Glad that you're here. If you're in Cinecourt East or Cinecourt West or at the Woodlands or online, however it is that you're here, we're really glad that you're here. So before turning to uh, God's word and to kind of what uh, we're going to start in this new series about, I want to kind of close out the old year by bringing you a year-end update. Every quarter, we try to bring just a brief five-minute update of here's kind of uh, financially in terms of the generosity and everything, how we're doing, because we're kind of all in this together. And like we've explained before, there's not like grant money or government support or I mean, it's just all us and all the things that happen. Uh, here on the Klein campus, at the Woodlands campus, bridging for tomorrow for our Title I schools, for the international missionaries and everything. It's all because of just our generosity. So if you were here in 2016, you know at several points where we dropped in quarterly, we were having a good year and we were on budget. We were in the black, uh, one or two quarters just barely. And... uh, But then the fourth quarter, first month, second month, just the bottom fell out. And we were so confused and so perplexed and asking ourselves, what has happened? What what is going on? Why has it gone this direction? And, um, and, And... we're having meetings and trying to figure out who are we going to cut? Who do we lay off at this point? And what ministry is going to suffer? For, is it the kids? Is it the, is it the youth? Is it the missionaries? And we just call them and say, sorry, it took a turn we didn't see. And, you know, all it's just really caused me a very stressful Thanksgiving. But anyhow, um, so, so that's kind of where we were. And I'm talking with the Lord and begging and pleading and confessing sins. I hadn't even gotten around yet to committing just anything to get it to turn around, God, anything to get it to turn around. And in the midst of uh, that, I felt like the Lord gave me three things and just sort of nudged me to to, to do three things. The first of those things I'm going to tell you about that I didn't tell you about until now. The first of those things, I felt like the Lord said, I, you need, I need you and your staff and your leaders to be praying more intentionally for your people. So he divvied up all the names and put them on these lists of about 40 or 50 and gave a list to each person on our lead team and each of our lay elders and a bunch of other prayer partners. And so you have been being prayed for for the last month of the year, every day. It's what we asked of our leaders to do. You're saying, well, what did you pray for us? Well, we were just praying that God would pour out his blessings upon you and your family, if you have family, and that he would uh, pour out blessings upon you as you went into the holiday season. And that as that happened, you would be mindful to pour some of those blessings uh, into his kingdom work and that you would share some of those blessings uh, for his purposes. Interesting thing, you never can tell exactly, you know, one for one, how, how does the prayer, how did our praying over here lead to this over here? But we did get, occasionally you do get a one for one. So this was an interesting thing. You know the video that we saw two or three Sundays ago cute young couple, they were just dating and they were talking about how they just had listened to me come and pour my heart out that Sunday in December and, and they just felt like the Lord said, so we're going to give our $100 gifts, or the equivalent, we're just going to give it to the Lord and not give gifts for each other. And I went back and I was looking on my list and he was on my list. I didn't even tell him that until this past week. Um, now, I know what some of you are thinking. You're like, I hope I never get on your prayer list, you know, because <laughs> I kind of like my Christmas presents, you know, and, and so, um, which was not what I was praying. I was just praying what I already told you, but, but you know, you never know how God's going to answer. And so it was really kind of, you know, just, wow, look what God um, does. So the second thing that we did in addition to prayer is we created this stand in the gap fund, sort of this, just the special extra bucket to um, 
inspire those of us who weren't in between jobs and who could uh, do above and beyond what we are normally doing, or any number of us, and many of you did do this. You stepped in with a first-time gift you'd never given before, and but you did um, during this month because of the, the invitation, the challenge that, that I extended. You're like, well, what, was, what were you standing in the gap for? Well, we realized that a good portion of our congregation are employed or were employed by oil and gas industries, which has been kind of rough, but hopefully, Lord willing, it's going to be turning around here pretty soon. And, but we realized, okay, maybe this is where that red arrow is. It, there's just like this gap, and, but we're big enough now. We're a large enough church, and surely there's enough health and collective generosity that we could close that gap for people who have to, who, who, who've had to pull out of their giving. Uh, which would be more uh, normal for them. And so we created that gap fund with a goal of $500,000, which was a stout goal for 27 days, the last 27 days of the year, you remember. And, <clears throat> but we said, who knows, maybe the Lord will bless us. Well, uh, Christmas Eve came and Christmas Eve was a rough day for the Warlines because in the Warline home, a stomach virus hit us like a tornado. Bam, bam, bam. It was just really, uh, as a matter of fact, if I ever get Alzheimer's, I'm hoping that this past Christmas Eve and Christmas will be one of the first memories it claims. And so there was a, but at the end of Christmas Eve services, I got a text that said, believe it or not, look what has happened to the Gap Fund. Take a look. So um, by the end of Christmas Eve services that night, we had closed the Gap. Yeah, isn't that awesome? Sure, you can clap. Praise the Lord. So that was cool. And the news gets even better because there were seven more days in the year and any number of you are like, oh, I still am gonna do that and I'm gonna do it electronically and, uh, or it's in the mail, and it's, and it's, but it's postmarked and all that sort of thing. And so look what happened the last week of the year after Christmas Eve, the Gap Fund even went beyond. Yeah, isn't that huge? <laughs> Nearly $623,000. So, we were, and, and this is yet something else that happened. Um, so we had this thing that was going on, but all around it was just people who are just, you, you normally, you're kind of a regular giver, uh, and, but maybe you've kind of been busy or you've been traveling or whatever, and, but you heard my thing that day and you're like, okay, but I know you said, don't, like, don't move what you would have normally do from this envelope to that envelope. And, act like it's a gap fund if it's really just, you know, and so, so, so normal giving was stimulated and um, fanned into flames to the end that by December 31st, our overall um, year-end uh, numbers made 2016 one of the most generous years we've ever had. It was amazing. A huge praise to the Lord. So nobody has to be laid off. We don't have to make any terrible phone calls uh, to people telling them overseas, sorry, we can't partner with you after all. Um, you know how we took on debt in 2015 for the children's ministry building, because that's when the downturn really hit and it hit pretty bad for us. And, but now we can make a big chunk uh, uh, out of that to sort of catching uh, back up. So there's just so many good things, so much uh, relief. And so um, I just wanted to bring uh, that update to you. Um, but that leads to the third thing that we did and to which I would attribute much of what happened this past month. You remember we went back to the basics and so for those several few weeks in December, I just said, you know, I, I don't want you just to focus on being generous. I want you to, let's, let's see if we can't uh, stimulate back to life some of the other spiritual rhythms of any successful Christian um, walk with the Lord. Um, the da daily Bible reading and daily prayer as well as generosity. Um, and, and I would be willing to guess 
that much of what has happened here is that all of these um, were sort of brought back to life in a number, number of people's um, walks uh, with the Lord this past month. Because here's the interesting thing. You can't very well read the Bible without then setting it aside and wanting to talk to him more. And then that's prayer. And you can't talk to him more for very long before you'll begin to hear him sort of whisper back to you and give you impressions and thoughts that will be coming back. And among those, you'll hear him nudge you. You'll feel him nudge you and say, hey, you know, I've poured out blessings upon you. And I want you to pour some of those blessings into my kingdom work and to helping other people um, um, with fewer resources. And so you see how these things kind of um, work together. Well, the end result is we finished the year in a place that I never asked or imagined that, that God was going to take us when we were at Thanksgiving. And I am so uh, thankful and grateful as your pastor. The, I think perhaps the most exciting thing for me is that it evidences a health in our congregation that deep down I knew, I just knew, I thought, at least I trusted, I wanted to know and that, I, that is there a greater health and vibrancy 